Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for calling us together as a congregation uh, to be able to meet. And Lord, we thank you for this moment in our church history. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for how your story has invaded our story. And we just pray that you would fill us with your spirit now. God, that you would uh, turn our eyes toward you and you would be the one who leads us in paths of righteousness. So we invite you in. And I pray that this would simply be a continuation of worship that's already begun this morning. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Well, hey guys, welcome to our, our member meeting. And we're, we're glad that you're here. There's a few things that we're going to run through uh, that I think are important for you guys to know about and uh, to be able to participate in. And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and hop in. Um, we, are, we are coming up to uh, almost, well, not almost, what month are we in? September? In January, it'll be one year that we've been into a two-year vision. And we call it Vision 2020. And basically, it's this idea that we are expecting greater things because Jesus promised us that. He said, you're going to do the things that I do, but then you're also going to do greater things than these. And what we're believing that to mean is that because he's leaving his Holy Spirit with us and filling us and allowing us to do things like tell our stories, there's going to be a far greater reach of the gospel because of what the church did rather than what Jesus did over his three years, if you can believe that. Those, those are the greater thing. We're, we're, you're going to see the gospel multiply in, in like awesome and beautiful ways because Jesus leaves and, and leaves us the Holy Spirit. And so uh, we've, we've just been taking that more seriously. It's a two-year vision for us where we started it January of, of 2019. So, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the completion of it and uh, I'm the, the completion of year one. And we're saying by, by these, what we're shooting for is, is in 2020, by the completion of 2020. And really what we've, what we've done is we've joined what God is already doing with Church United and their efforts to see the amount of Christ followers in our area double. I mean, you can do a lot of things as a church, right? You can go after a lot of causes. You can do a lot of good things. But there's one ultimate thing you can do. And when, and when, when you go after the lost and people get saved, then they multiply all those good things. Do you understand? Rather than you trying to do one or two good things, you, you, then, you then see people come to life and all of a sudden, like, all of the good things that the kingdom talks about, it happens through the priesthood of believers, not just through a couple of bigger churches that have really cool programs. And so that's why we're going after evangelism and because it's on Jesus's heart. He came to seek and save the lost. And so what we said is, well, we want to double the amount of Christ followers that we see in, in our area, but like specifically in our church. And the only way that we have to measure that is through baptisms. And so we, we looked at our baptisms, and uh, last year we had baptized 36 people. Uh, and so we said, okay, well, we want to double that. We're, let's shoot for 200 baptisms over the next two years. Which, okay, so if, you're, if you just baptized 36, you realize that's not very good math, right? How do you go from 36 to 200 in two years? Well, you've got to believe that God's going to do something spectacular in your midst. And so this is a vision that it, it, it's not going to happen unless, we can't get our arms around it unless God shows up. And so what we said is, hey, um, we saw 36 people get baptized last year. Let's shoot for 75 this year. And then, and then we'll try to make up sort of numerically the rest as we move forward into year two, it, getting us to uh, 200. So just so you know, Yesterday, we baptized our 84th person this year. Um, yeah. So all praise to God. It's so crazy. I get dressed. I go to the beach. and I'm like, how is this happening? How are we baptizing 84 people when last year we baptized 36? And you know I'm not a numbers guy, right? Like, I, like it, it's not like it doesn't like excite. I don't think about it often. But, but God does... There were 3,000 that got saved and there were 5,000 plus that got, so he, he knows numbers. And what's cool about when you think about the numbers is like it, it just, it gives a great encouragement that God is doing something crazy. There's no way, there's no way with my preaching our, who, you know, like that, that we're gonna see this doubling. Even with our great community life and all this, unless God's Holy Spirit shows up and does something radical in our midst, it's not gonna happen. And it's been happening. And what's cool is like the guy who had to go wash to get the healing, we're having to walk in faith. And that's what we've been doing. We've been walking in faith that God's going to do this. And so we've been believing that um, he's going to do it by also uh, changing our culture. 
And so we've been talking about four things that would be a greater things culture, a culture of expectation, where we move from just attending things to expecting things to happen when we show up because God's going to be there. That's a really cool shift for us. Uh, we've been talking about hospitality and moving from just normal hospitality where it's just, you're just not a, like rude to like really kind of a, a bit more of uh, aggressive hospitality or hospitality like the gospel does for the other, for the unexpected. Uh, we've been talking about uh, empowerment where we move as a church from owning everything and everybody working really hard in their little area to figuring out, well, no, how do I give my area away? How do I empower other people to lead? And then finally, we've been looking at invitation. And that's this series right here. And this is, what does it look like to move from a, a community that informs people about Jesus to a community that actually invites people to Jesus? And it's not that we weren't doing these things. It's just that these are the four cultural shifts that we've been focusing on this year. This is the fourth series. I've preached on it, and we're going to do it again next year. So next year, you're going to hear about these four things again. We're going to stick with where we are, and we're just going to continue to go deeper because we've seen cr great fruit. And, and so we're just going to continue to look at those same four themes. And so I'm just so thankful that uh, we've now come to a place with our small groups where we are launching a really big new chapter and season in our church. Um, for a while now, it's been maybe a year and a half, uh, we, and there was a, there's a few MCs that are still happening, but we came to the conclusion that the season of MCs had ended here for the Avenue Church, and we were going to wait on the Lord. We were going to rest, and we were going to explore what God had for us next. And so that, that's been about a year and a half. Maybe I can't remember the exact date, but it's been a, a pretty good while where we've just been waiting. And we now feel extremely confident that God has called us into this new season of really trying here at the Avenue Church to put the family first. And what I mean by that is the whole family of God, whether you're single or married, whatever. All I'm talking about is our, as, we've, as we've grown, our family has diversified. And so too do we need to have diverse contexts where people can come into the family, especially if God is bringing the increase of new believers into the family of God. Thus, the launch of fall small groups. And, uh, and we're really excited. You're going to hear a little bit more about that from Mitch and, and from John as well. But this is a great uh, move of God in our midst that we're, again, simply uh, enjoying joining him in. Uh, and, and so I've been able, I'm going to launch my group on Friday. I've got a running group at 6 a.m., okay? It's going to be awesome for you guys if you want to get up early. Uh, nobody's looking at me right now, so okay, maybe this is not the crew to recruit in. Uh, my wife and I got to step back into community on Friday night where we went to the Wits uh, home group, and it's just been great. So we're enjoying it as a family, and I would invite you guys to, as we really try to put the family first, knowing that God's going to build his family, and out of that, he's going to draw people to his bride. Uh, so with that being said, a large component in what God is doing in this family-first approach is John Hicks. Um, and so, John, if you'll make your way, uh, I've, I'm, I'm going to say a little bit more about you after you speak, but John has come on as our discipleship and care pastor, and we are uh, really just incredibly blessed. I'm running out of adjectives because I, you know, I'm, I'm done right now. But all the awesome adjectives that you could think of to describe this guy, his wife, and his family, apply them now. And that's how we feel. We, we're like overwhelmed. We, we married up. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Okay, like here he is. We don't deserve him. He's a gift of grace. And I asked him to share a few things that he's excited about as it pertains to what's going on at the AC. Cool. Hi, guys. Good to see you all and, and good to be meeting more of you each each week. Every, every time I think I've met so many, I come in and I'm like, whoa, I don't know anybody. And I really want to get to know everyone here. So that's, that's one of my goals. It's so good to be here. So glad to be a part of the Avenue family. I love Casey and Mitch and all the leadership. And, and of course, I love my wife and she's been a part of this church too. So it already feels uh, like home. Um, to us. So uh, thank you for letting me come and, and serve alongside with you. Uh, my title is Care and Discipleship Pastor. What does that mean? A little self-explanatory. I'm going to give kind of a, just a very general view of it. Um, I believe that the church should be the most caring community there is. And I believe that because I think that's what Jesus meant when he said, I, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So the way we love one another as a family of God is a powerful witness to those who don't yet belong to the family of God. And so that, that's a big component of that is care. 
And so part of my role will be overseeing the, the care, the shepherding, the pastoring here at uh, the Avenue. Um, I want to make sure that no one falls through the cracks. I want to make sure that uh, everyone who's willing gets involved in a community, a, a small group. I uh, want to make sure that, that if you're experiencing loss or grief or you've had a baby or you're getting married, that the church family knows about it and we gather um, around you to support you and help you during whatever life uh, things you are, you are dealing with. So the, the care component, I, I believe no one should fall through the cracks at the avenue. Amen? No one. And so that's part of my job, um, being more inward focused and uh, just making sure you're loved and cared for. And then another part of that is discipleship. Uh, Jesus gave us the Great Commission. We're to make disciples. We're to be disciples. And we've launched this, this awesome small group ministry now. And so I'll be working alongside with, with Mitch and making sure that that goes well and continues to go well. And, and over time, my role will, will largely involve uh, equipping, encouraging, training, praying for hanging out with the leaders of those groups to make sure the leaders feel the support, have the support that they, they need. So that's the role I'll serve there. Another component is in the area of church planting. A lot of the funding that, that's available for my position is designated for church planting and church planters. And so I'll come alongside our church planters and potential church planters and make sure that they are supported and encouraged. And uh, the church planting, in case you can attest to this, it's one of the loneliest jobs in the world if you don't have a network around you. And so we want to make sure that any church plant we're a part of, we're not just throwing money at them, but we're with them in their church planting journey. So I'll also be taking a lead in that. And, and just one more element, I was given today like a stack this thick of Connect cards. Isn't that cool? That's a lot of connect cards. So one of the things that, that I'm doing is when someone attends the app for the first time and, and they fill out a connect card and, and they want to get involved, I will walk with them and make sure they find a place of community and a place of, of service if that's what they want to be involved in, et cetera. So again, everyone whom, whom God sees fit to bring here uh, we want to make sure that, that they're taken care of. So that's, that's my role in a, in a nutshell. And there's so much more, but I'll, I'll stop there. Um, so what I wanted to do now is, is speak a little bit about the details behind John Hicks coming here and, and how we can really care for uh, John and his family. So it was, um, I don't know, John, was it a year process or... But it wasn't quick where we started thinking about and praying about and maybe, yes, no, it's not the right time. Um, and eventually we, we came up against two obstacles to John coming here. Number one was we knew Allie. We didn't know John. Okay. So it was like, you must be pretty awesome if Allie's like into you. Okay. And, you, and she married. That's cool. But we don't know if you're going to be a great fit here. We don't, we don't know who you are. We, and, and the second one was financially. Like we hadn't budgeted for a random position we didn't even need. We we didn't even know we needed. Um, and so he was on the side of feeling called in Michigan that that season had closed. And he was actually feeling called to the Avenue. And uh, a position here and, and thinking about coming, uh, becoming a part of this family and team. And so it opened us up to the, to the process that we would then enter into of exploring, well, what about John Hicks? And what would he do? And what are some of the needs? And, and if you've been around the Ave for a while, you know, that, that there has been a time and a tendency where things can fall through the cracks, right? We do a lot, and, and, but, but we don't, sometimes it doesn't come off well, or if it comes off well, it's like in the midst of three or four other things and everybody's running really hard, and it was like, man, wouldn't it be amazing if God would send almost kind of like an internal shepherd to care well for the people who are actually making the Avenue Church happen? Like, like who could walk slowly and carefully with the leaders and, and build that community and really support the people who have given themselves to the Avenue Church uh, while helping new people to start their journey in a way where they're followed up with and cared for and they feel valued and they have, they have a pathway into this particular family. Um, those things were happening, but not to the degree that we felt God could do through 
somebody like John Hicks. And so we said, well, we can solve the relational part. And why don't you come down? And so he, he came down. He hung out with our elders. He, he hung out with our church family. He preached. And we're like, man, we, we love this guy. Th- this guy would be, we feel like, a, a divine fit. But it didn't solve the financial part. God didn't bring it with, like, the, 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 the money that they needed to support their family. And so, you know, we were, we were really honest uh, with John and, and have been and just like, hey, man, we would love to have you, but we, like, we don't have any money. <laughs> and so I know you've got three kids and a wife and like this isn't something that we had planned for. So I'm not sure what to do. And, and so over the course of the dialogue, you know, he just invited us to, to process that. And we agreed with him and to pr- like, hey, it, just think about that. Just, just think about what is, what is there. Is there anything that could be offered towards the Hicks family where he and Allison would then be willing to fundraise the rest? I mean, that's how, that's how dedicated and devoted they felt to the call to come to the Avenue Church. And so we went back and looked at our budget and we were like, okay, we found some stuff. You know, we, we found some stuff, but it's insulting <laughs> what, what we have for you. It does not, it's not even close to who you are. And so, so Mitch, I remember Mitch almost being like, dude, we can't offer, we cannot, you can't say that's an offer to this guy. I'm like, but Mitch, this is what he said. He said, he, you know, so Mitch and I would go back, but he, he said he's got a family. Anyways, we were able to take some um, of our church, as he, as he mentioned, some of our church plant funding. We were able to look in our budget and find some, we, we made a small offer, okay? And I just want to, and I'll talk to you kind of about where we are right now and your participation in it. So I wrote down just a few notes. 18 years he had been in Michigan at that church and really began to feel a distinct call to Delray Beach and the Avenue Church. I, I, that, that was our place of budget and fit for him when we said uh, that we, so we, we finally all agreed, well, this is what we'll offer you. And uh, so we made the offer and he's like, okay, I'll pray about it. And, and he accepted and he, by faith, said, yeah, we're going to come down. We're going to trust God to, to care for that. We're going we're gonna to walk in faith here. And so these are some of the ways that he's been walking in faith. I want to make these uh, apparent to you, and then I want to call you into, hey, if, if you can help, now would be the time to help. So this is, this is kind of his journey. He's been willing to raise funds, both he and Allie. So some letters have gone out to people and friends and families that, they, that they've known. They actually, um, for a good portion of that time, didn't really... Uh, include you guys because they they wanted the funding to come from out there and before we like the most appropriate thing would be for us to speak on John's behalf rather than you to hear from John first and so we're now speaking on John's behalf but he's been fundraised they've been fundraising kind of outside of the Avenue Church so as not to interfere with the things that we already have going on realizing that this was a new addition I want to make I want to make that known to you that they've been willing to to do that Uh, they've been willing to take less, not just what we were offering him, but, but actually the, the package that we were like, man, okay, if we did get the fundraising, this is, this is about what we could do. It's, it's less significantly than he had as the lead pastor up in Michigan, and he's been paying his own health insurance. So again, just want to make that aware to you guys that this is how much he believes in the call of God and the fact that he, that he needs to be here uh, and, and that his family needs to be here. And Allison is 1,000% behind this as well. Uh, so this isn't one person dragging the other. This is them both kind of like running into God's call like we were in the waves, I think, yesterday, but, but maybe a little bit like, oh, man, Lord, I really am hoping you're going to show up um, and, and knowing that God will. And then finally, he's been willing to serve on a team. So he, he was in the the lead pastor for 18 years, and then he had more lead pastor um, experience before that in the Cayman Islands, and now he's come, and he has just been incredibly supportive and willing to serve as the discipleship and care pastor instead of the lead pastor, and that, that doesn't mean that there's one better than the other, but if you've ever been leading something for 18 years, and then you decide to come and serve on a team with guys who don't know as much as you, haven't walked with the Lord, the Lord as long as you, and certainly haven't pastored as long as you, you, you got to have some humility. And that is exactly what he's had. He's, he's been willing to come and serve with us and, and just in this team. Uh, and so I, I only tell you that because I wanted you to be a part of his story now. Now it's time to bring you guys in and let you know this is what's happening. The financial shortfall, if you will, or the financial um, gap that he is trying to raise and now we are trying to help him with is $35,000. 
Okay, so $35,000 would meet his needs uh, for year one. Uh, and so we're really on a two-year fundraising plan with him because it'll take us probably that much time for our budget to probably catch up and hopefully absorb uh, him. But for the, for the first two years, we're, we're looking, we're asking, we're, we're asking people to go over and above and, um, and, and we're believing God for it. And so it's going to be happening from, from the outside. His home church has been like, I've used the word radically too much today, but radically generous and, and their support to you just, I mean, that just is a, a show of their endearment to you and for you. And so uh, what we want to do is just for you to consider giving towards that, um, toward that need and helping him, helping his family to be able to come and, and receive the funding that they deserve, but are still looking for. And what's really cool is that it, it would take an act of God and God's people to meet that. And so now is an opportunity for you guys to participate. It's not, a, it's not a guilt thing. It's not a hard sell. It's just like, this is a need we have. This man and his family will far supersede our expectations and what we give to this. I am confident in it. And so with that being said, I'm just going to ask that the Holy Spirit would lead you and guide you, however that might be. Um, I, I even do it in prayer now, and then I'll turn it over uh, to Mitch. Father, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, and not out of compulsion, but um, just out of uh, a love that compels us, would you help us as we each in our own hearts uh, discuss with our families and process and pray with you? Would you, would you help us to give uh, what we feel uh, is, is coming from you to give to John and Allie? And would you give us glad hearts in doing it in Christ's name? Amen. Uh, before I give it over to Mitch, the, the ways that you can do that on our app or online in, in, in any of our giving mechanisms, there's a drop down button that says discipleship pastor. You could click on that and choose your amount and give that way or uh, check uh, with noted discipleship pastor. With that being said, here's Mitch. Yeah, and I forgot to mention this morning too, as we give to the benevolence offering, it's not just a basket being passed, but you can go to our drop down and there's one for benevolence as well if you feel led to do that for uh, for our benevolence. Uh, one thing uh, before I jump into financials, all of you should get a sheet that has some of our financial information on it. And uh, we want to be incredibly transparent with all of you and how we resource, uh, how we steward God's resources. And so we always want to put that before you. But uh, as elders, we take a um, our position as shepherds of this church very seriously. And so the decisions we make, we prayerfully consider. We are praying for you individually as members and as a uh, part of the body here at the Avenue Church. We love you dearly. We couldn't do this without you. And so this is a journey we're on together. And so your financial giving to this church is a huge blessing to us. We don't take that lightly and we want to steward that well. And so one of the things, as I said, is we want to be incredibly transparent on where the funds go, where we are financially um, so that uh, you can feel good about um, what, what we're doing with your finances. Um, so if you look on the front page of your handout, there's a, gra um, a chart on the bottom. We're going to start on that page. And so this fiscal year, so we're 11 months into our fiscal year, a financial statement came out just after the 1st of September for the first 11 months of the year. And that's what all this information is on. Our new fiscal year starts October 1. And so we are starting to formulate a budget. Your elders will have a budget in place before October 1. And we're hoping to finalize that on Wednesday. And one of the things that uh, I feel compelled to do if, uh, coming out of a conference and all the elders are in support is uh, projecting a budget for this next year based on 95% of what we have coming in this year. Because we've made a couple decisions in the past a few years ago where we actually put a budget into place that we were projecting to take in more money than we did the year previously. And we found ourselves in a pretty sticky situation. We found ourselves with very little cash on hand to uh, almost uh, within a week or two of not being able to make payroll at the church. And so by God's grace, we have put into place the last couple of years budgets, budgets that have put us in a place where financially we are in a good place. But uh, um, I want to go through that with you. And so the first 11 months of the year, we've actually taken in $613,000 in actual uh, money come in. And that leaves a net income 
of a negative $20,000. So we're over budget about $20,000. But when I say over budget, it is something that we're following along with all the time. Our accountant every month has given us reports. I'm looking at them uh, a couple times during the month and then reporting to the elders. And so we've seen this coming along all year. Uh, coming here to uh, Trinity has been a big part of that. And so we bought uh, 100, uh, didn't we buy 100 chairs for $5,000 for Trinity. We donated that for in here. We've done renovations to our office. We've, uh, there's some other reasons on here, but there are reasons that we believed and we felt called to make those choices to, to go into a deficit a little bit this year. But we were able to do that because I think, um, well, not that I think, I know we were good stewards the last couple of years of reserves, right? We had the reserves in place to be able to spend those finances. And so if you look at the chart on the bottom, so days of cash on hand. So all of these have ideals. There's a second uh, column that says ideals. And so there's a council in the United States called the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. And they set standards for how a healthy church operates. And so one of the things we want to do is we want to be within those percentages of how a healthy church operates. And so if you look just quickly at it, days of cash on hand, it costs about $1,700 a day to operate the church, believe it or not. $1,700 a day. And so we have about $72,800 in reserves as of Friday. And that means we have 43 days of cash on hand. That means if we didn't take in another dollar, we were able to operate for 43 days. Uh, a healthy target that we're shooting for is 60 to 90 um, days and 60 days minimally. And so we've been close to that. This year we were willing to, to back off that a little bit. And so we're targeting for 60 this next year. But we're in a good spot at 43 um, debt to in, uh, debt to revenue. We have zero debt here at the church, so there's no debt. We have no debt that we have to pay. Staffing costs, as you see, a big part of what we do here at the Avenue Church is we invest in people. We're all about discipleship, as John reminded us, and so we invest in people and discipleship, and um, and you see that at the 53 percent, we're uh, just over the 50. And if you look at those percentages, we're always within uh, a couple percentage points of what the ideals are. Be according to ECFA. The one place where we uh, are tremendously radical, as Casey continues reminds uh, us of, is generosity. We're very generous. And so we give away, uh, we've 16% of our budget this year is actually given away to missions. And so we are very much about supporting and loving. So that goes to church planning. That goes 12,000 to city house. Uh, that goes 12,000 to relational harmony. We've sent 10,000 to Haiti this year. We'll spend about six $60,000 on church planning this coming year and about 50000 this year. And so these are just areas where we just give money away. Locally, we have church plants that we support too. And so we want to be generous. Uh, if you flip that over on the backside, it just breaks down some of those numbers. And you can look at them uh, for what they are and see uh, kind of where we're standing as of now going into the last month of our current fiscal year. Uh, like I said, we have about $73,000 of cash on hand in the bank in 43 days that uh, allows us to operate, and we're shooting for 60 this next year. Um, if you have any questions about the budget or the finances, by all means, come and see me or one of the elders, and uh, we would love to just show you. Like I said, we want to be transparent in all that we do. Uh, lastly, before we end today, I want to talk just briefly about groups. And so I mentioned today in announcements that there's 160 plus people engaged in our small group ministry now. I don't know what it was before. Uh, I actually could probably come close to guessing, but it's probably 50 to 60 range. But now we have 167 that I have counted in small groups uh, that have launched in the last week. And uh, some of the small groups are still launching. There's one, I know the Lanes launches October 1st. They're going to meet on Tuesday nights. They're going to have a home Bible study. Uh, the boating and jet skiing kicks off next Saturday. The weather wasn't permitting this week, but they're going to kick off. And so I want to tell you just a couple stories about why I think these are important. One, a couple reasons. But one is that uh, you can belong before you believe with these small groups. So I've been able to invite a guy who does real estate here in Delray Beach to my small group to play golf on Monday nights. He loves golf. I play golf with him. Got a great relationship with him. He's not quite ready to come to church, but he's willing to play golf, right? And afterwards, we're going to take 15 minutes. We're going to talk. We're going to jump into the scriptures, do a devotion, and we're going to pray. And he's willing to come along for that. And so I can walk alongside him as we play golf, 
right? Planting seeds, letting them know my story. Uh, there's another one for basketball. I know somebody who uh, is a member of our church who invited his brother-in-law to come and play basketball this week, and he got to hear a devotion by Sam and pray afterwards. And so he gets to be surrounded by Christian brothers and sisters. And I'm sure some of you know of some, and I probably don't know of all the stories, but they're just special, these affinity groups, these basketball, photography, boating. It's just an easy ask to invite our not yet saved friends to come along with us, join with us, hear about the gospel, ways for us to love them well in intentional ways, in tangible ways. And so uh, super excited. John and I have put a lot of energy and effort into these groups. I've traveled to Birmingham. Um, I feel like they're off and running. We've assigned coaches to all these groups. So coaches, they're being supported. There's a system in place. And so can we improve? Absolutely. We're going to always be refining and improving the system. But we believe that uh, God's going to do some really amazing things. And we're already seeing these amazing things take place right before our very eyes. And they're just kicked off this week. I know the women's study had an amazing turnout on Wednesday night. And uh, I can't wait to hear the stories of what God's going to do through the small group ministry this semester. Um, so that being said, too, is as you think about it, January will be here before you know it. If there's something you have an affinity to, some sort of group that you would like to lead, let us know. Let's set you up ahead of time that you can be praying, prayerfully considering what it is that you may want to lead in January and so that we can market it and come alongside you appropriately as well. Uh, that's all I have. We want to be uh, cognizant of time. We're just a couple minutes over. Uh, just so you know, we're videotaping this today, and so it's live streamed and it's videotaped. We're going to send it out to all of our membership. Um, yeah, appreciate and love all you guys, and uh, yeah, blessed. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to just uh, close this in uh, prayer. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, a big thanks to Mitch, who has uh, poured his his heart and soul into launching these groups uh, and getting them in a place where it can really open up the family. Can we just say thank you to Mitch with a, a brief hand? And So, Father, thank you for uh, this time together as a family. God, thank you that we have the opportunity to take care of one of our own as we think of the Hicks. And uh, I pray that you would give us a heart uh, to, to just rally around them in prayer and support and relationship and all the things that a new family would need coming in here. Who wants to then give it away to other families? Uh, so, Father, help us uh, to be generous. Help us to be kind in all that. And thank you for the Hicks, uh, just the gift uh, that they are to us. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in our midst. God, there's no way, I mean, I, there's no strategy that, that sees 84 people get baptized in a church like ours who, who was doing 36. And do, God, that's just you. And so we just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you that you showed up far beyond what we thought. And, uh, and, and we pray that you would continue to do that. God, give us faithfulness as we follow you. Protect and guide us. God, and may we really have just this just great and growing affinity and devotion and love first to you and, first, and then to one another. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks. Have a great Sunday, guys.